So since last night, Gaza has been going through the fourth blackout of communications, which meant that as of this morning, UNRWA could not continue its humanitarian operations. We could not get to the borders with Egypt to pick up the trucks of humanitarian supplies, and we urgently need fuel to come into Gaza. The humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip is absolutely overwhelming. Every single day, the number of people who come to seek shelter in UNRWA facilities is on the rise. Uh, we have so far more than 800,000 people who continue to flock into these facilities in search of safety, in search of humanitarian assistance, in search of protection. We don't have uh, the most updated information on the overall situation in Gaza because of the telecommunications network. You see, when this happens, we are completely disconnected from our staff in the Gaza Strip. The vast majority of our staff do not communicate with us when this happens. This is the fourth time that this happens. Medical facilities and other civilian infrastructure must be protected at all times. Since the war began, we have lost 103 colleagues who were killed in the war in the Gaza Strip. This is the highest number uh, in the history of the United Nations of aid workers killed. Many were killed while with their families, while at home. Many were displaced. Uh, one colleague was killed while waiting at a bakery to pick up some bread. Another colleague was killed with her daughter. She was a uh, a gynecologist, one of the very, very few health specialists in, in the Gaza Strip, Dr. Serene. This is very, very sad for us. We will continue to mourn our colleagues. We will never forget them. And UNRWA will never be the same without these colleagues. It is time, it, it is high time, it is time for a ceasefire. It is time for a ceasefire if we want to save whatever is left of our humanity a ceasefire. So UNRWA is the largest humanitarian organization in the Gaza Strip and we're also one of the oldest organizations. We've been working on the ground with and for the Palestinian communities since the late 1940s. And we have been, since the beginning of the war, we've been working to host more than 800,000 people who have come to our shelters to provide assistance. Our own staff who have been impacted, whether it's through grief or loss, whether they've been displaced themselves, they've been on the front lines providing assistance, providing support to the communities in need. But we've been strangled as UNRWA. There looks like a, a deliberate attempt to weaken our ability to fulfill our humanitarian mandate. So right now we've opened 150 shelters. They are absolutely overwhelmed. We never planned for such a huge number of people coming to our shelters. When we planned for the worst before the war, we planned only for 150,000 people. And right now we are more than four times that. So we are also very overstretched. We are also challenged due to the inability to bring in supplies, due to the very tight siege that Gaza has been going through and due to the ban on fuel. More than 60 facilities of UNRWA have been impacted or damaged during this, this war. And this is absolutely unacceptable because these are UN facilities. They must never be hit. They must never be impacted or damaged. And as a result, um, there's been more than 60 people who were displaced in those uh, facilities um, when, when this happened and, and, and they were killed. Most recently, just last week, uh, we had a direct hit to one of our guest houses in the south of the Gaza Strip. And 70%, 70 percent, 70 percent of those facilities that were impacted during the war were not in the north. They were in the south or in the middle areas, which is an indication that no place is safe in the Gaza Strip.